These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service at my website. Thanks. This chapter is focusing on conjugated systems. But what does conjugated mean? Now that's one of the, the ideas that you had a chance to review in the videos, if you made it to video five. Do you remember what the word conjugated means? Um, it means... You can look at the notes that you took if you need to. What does conjugated mean? That was from video five, I believe. It's a side to side overlap of P orbitals in every atom in the ring. Good. Except, that particular series of videos that we're focusing on was focusing on benzene, so it was focusing on rings. And that, that's why I was focusing on the idea of a ring. But right now, we're not really going to be especially focusing on rings, or we're not going to be especially focusing on benzene. So all that we have to say for conjugated, the key idea for conjugated is side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals. The main idea of conjugated is side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals at three or more atoms. Conjugated means side to side overlapping p orbitals at three or more adjacent atoms. We'll look at some examples. Three or more adjacent atoms? That's right. Now, the word adjacent is kind of superfluous. I left it out. They can't be overlapping if they're not adjacent. Sure. So adjacent is, is kind of a redundant word. There was no way they could be overlapping unless they were adjacent atoms. But they, they do have to be at adjacent atoms. Now let's review the topics that you were watching in that video series, because we need to build on that today. What is the hybridization of this carbon? SP3. That's right. This is just a normal SP3 carbon. What's the hybridization of this carbon? SP3. Good. What's the hybridization of this carbon? Uh, SP2. Good. And this one? SP2. And this one? Good knowledge of hybridization. We know that here we've got one sigma bond and one pi bond. We want to especially focus on what the pi bond is being constructed out of. Well, pi bonds are constructed out of side to side overlapping p orbitals. Pi bonds are constructed out of side to side overlapping p orbitals. Let's review something else from that video series. Do you remember, do sp3 hybridized atoms have any p orbitals? No. No. How about sp2 hybridized atoms? One. That's good. That's good that you're remembering that. That's very important. Well, now we can see why we can form a pi bond over here, because these do have one p orbital each. So let me redraw this in a way that might give us more insight to what's going on over here. By the way, what's the shape of a p orbital? Can you draw what, uh, p, what the p orbital looks like in shape? the shape of a p orbital. In fact, you've already drawn it. That's right. That's the shape of a p orbital. Here I'm still putting in the sigma bond. Here's the pair of electrons in the sigma bond. But what would be a more accurate way of drawing the pi bond? Like this. Here's the 1p orbital on this sp2 hybridized atom. And here's the 1p orbital on this sp2 hybridized atom. And what's the pi bond? Well, I can put, I can imagine that this p orbital is contributing this electron, and this p orbital is contributing this electron, and then the pi bond is the side-to-side -side overlap between these two p orbitals. 
the pi bond is the side-to-side -side overlap between these two p orbitals. This picture is just the same molecule as this one. It's just that we've drawn more accurately what a pi bond really consists of. Obviously, just a straight line with two dots is not a very accurate picture of a bond. This is a more accurate picture of what a pi bond looks like. I'm not going to bother drawing an accurate picture of the sigma bond because we're not focusing on that. We'll just draw an accurate picture of the pi bond here. These dots just indicate the side-to-side -side overlap. By the way, sometimes it's conventional to draw the dot, the, these dashes here both uh, for the top lobes and for the bottom lobes. But this doesn't represent two different pi bonds. These are both parts of the same pi bond. There's just one pi bond between these two side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals. And these two electrons are in the bond. Now, it's conventional to say that this orbital is contributing this electron and this orbital is contributing this electron. But remember that the electrons are not really can, are not really just dots or particles. We can also can conceptualize them as clouds or waves. In fact, this is a tie-in to the physics topics that you're going over right now, the idea of electron clouds. We can't draw a cloud, so I'm not going to draw the electrons as clouds. But in your mind, you have to realize that this electron is really spread over this entire region. And this electron is really spread over this entire, electron, over this entire region, too, between the two atoms. That's what the pi bond really consists of. That's what these dots here are trying inadequately to convey, that these two electrons are really clouds that are spread over this whole region. That's what's really going on in a pi bond. Now, this molecule is not conjugated, even though it does have side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals. But it's not conjugated because it only has the side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals at two atoms. A single pi bond does not make a molecule conjugated because it only has the overlap at two atoms. If we could get a third atom in the mix, though, however, then we would have the conjugation. Let's consider this molecule, for example. This is butadiene. What's the hybridization of this carbon? Um, that is uh, sp2. And here? sp2. And here? sp2. They're all sp2. Good. So do these atoms each have p orbitals? Correct. Yeah, they all have p orbitals. So again, this is not a, that, an ac not a particularly accurate way of drawing the molecule. A more accurate way would be to show p orbital at each atom. We can show the side to side overlapping p orbitals at every atom. And then we can say this orbital is contributing one of the electrons in the pi bond. And this orbital is contributing another electron in the pi bond. But we remember that we're really thinking of these electrons as clouds that are spread over this entire region and forming this pi bond. And by the same token, we have another pi bond over here. Would this molecule be conjugated? Yes. Now we have side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals, not just at three atoms, but at four atoms. So we have more than enough side-to-side -side overlapping p orbitals. So this definitely would be conjugated. Why is it interesting? What, what, what's interesting about conjugated molecules? How are conjugated molecules different from other molecules? Well, do you remember, do electrons like to be concentrated or spread out? They like to be spread out. They want to be spread out. Remember, the electrons are all, have negative charges, and they don't like to be close to other electrons. They like to spread out as much as possible. Uh, organic chemists say they like to be delocalized. We want to delocalize the electrons. The more we can spread, out, spread them out, the better. Here we've said that these two electrons are spread out over this bond. And these two electrons are spread out over this pi bond. But now if we look at this picture, we can see that actually we could think of all, of these, all four of these electrons as being spread out over all four of these orbitals. After all, why, why should we focus just on the overlap between these two orbitals over here? There's also overlap between these two orbitals, right? So if the electrons can be spread out between these two overlapping orbitals, maybe the electrons could also be spread out between these two overlapping orbitals here. So in fact, the best picture here would be to think of all four of these electrons as spread out over this entire region. 
They're spread out over this entire region made up by the four overlapping p orbitals. We just have four clouds of electrons spread out over this entire region. Well, that makes them more delocalized, and that makes the molecule more stable and more happy. So conjugation is a good thing for a molecule. Molecules like being conjugated. That makes them more stable because it allows more places for the electrons to be. It allows the electrons to spread out more. That means that, in a way, this picture is a little bit misleading because it makes like these two electrons are stuck here and these two electrons are stuck here. This picture, in a way, is more accurate because it shows that the four electrons are spread out over this entire region because of the side-to-side -side overlap. 